Hello and welcome to our web chat on how sustainability programs deliver, where we were discussing Pearson's sustainability 2016 report and their 2020 plan. Pearson is probably the world's leading learning company with expertise in educational courseware and assessment and a range of teaching and learning services powered by technologies. Their products and services are used by millions of teachers and learners around the world every day. They sum themselves up really for me on the website where they say at the end they say because wherever learning flourishes so do people and that's really what this sustainability program is about. Now we've got two people who are joining us, James Kelly, Group Treasurer of Pearson's PLC, whose role covers management of the group's debt portfolio, financial risk management, including insurance, interest rate and foreign exchange management. Jason Walters, who's Director of Sustainability at Pearson, who is responsible for developing the strategy and programs for Pearson's 2020 Sustainability Plan and oversees the reporting and engaging stakeholders and has worked in sustainability programs for many years. What they're going to do is explain their ambitious and comprehensive and sustainability program and how it affects all parts of their group and activities, including treasury investment. Jason, can you explain how you tackle this problem? Yes, thanks, Jack. Um, I'd like to point out, I really like the way that you kicked us off because our, our plan and why we're here is really about improving lives and improving learning outcomes for all of the learners that our business touches. And that's the focus of our 2020 sustainability plan. The plan is a five-year vision to integrate social and environmental issues into every aspect of the company to drive our long-term growth and to help advance the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. A key part about the plan is that it's very closely aligned with our corporate strategy, and it's driven by the issues that matter most to our business and our stakeholders, from our learners to our employees to our suppliers and investors, everyone that has a stake in the way that Pearson does business. The plan, as you can see here, is broken up into three pillars. Be a trusted partner, reach more learners, and shape the future of learning. In the first pillar, and you will see in each pillar how it's very, very closely aligned to how our business operates and the business outcomes that we're looking to deliver. In the first pillar, we put our, put our values into practice by developing and delivering effective, engaging, and reliable products that improve learning outcomes. We promote diversity and inclusion because we feel that it's a key to attracting talent and to promoting the innovation and diversity that our culture needs for part of our digital transformation. We're tackling climate change because it reduces our energy use and our operating costs. We're focusing on a much leaner, smaller base of suppliers. It shares our values and commitment to sustainability because we believe it improves efficiency and resilience in our overall business. In pillar two, reach more learners, we're really achieving a social outcome, helping learners in a way that also grows our business by improving access to education and affordability for learners from all backgrounds. From North American higher education to our assessments business, business around the world, we know that our learners encompass a broad, broad range of lifestyles, income levels, cultures, and geographies. So when we develop our products and services from online learning programs to personalized learning tools, we know that they need to meet the needs of all of those different learners and their unique circumstances in order to grow our business and have the impacts that we want to. In pillar three, we're shaping the future of learning. We're focusing on technology and developing a new global learning platform that will transform the cost and the flexibility of how we deliver products and services and allow and expand access to education and make our products much more affordable. Um, we're also focused on employability because we know that connecting people to jobs and helping to build an inclusive economy that creates futures for all of our learners is a key to our business and what they're looking for. You mentioned it's, it goes right across the company. I mean, who's involved? Is everybody involved? Yes, it's a key, that's a key aspect of the program. This is a, the, the plan cuts across all aspects of our business and the responsibility for implementing many, many aspects of the plan actually comes down to our business partners. So the key for sustainability is to be a catalyst, to provide a, a lens for, in terms of how to see the business and how to see our market that helps to provide insights and helps to inform the way that we do business. So does every manager have a, 
a role in this? Does James have a role in this? I think, yes, definitely. James and from finance to product development to sales, everybody has a role in delivering our sustainability plan. And it's a five-year vision. So part of the plan is to work over time to integrate that plan across all of the business, uh, across the business. So it takes... And I think I'd, I'd echo that. So it, it's one of those things that sustainability isn't something that sits in Jason's department and, and you know, a few people work on it and produce some, some nice reports. You know, if, if we look at the way that we operate Treasury, for example, it's really important to think about how we can complement that work. So as we think about how we reach more learners, for example, if you're, if you're looking at very poor areas of South Africa, they're unlikely to be carrying Visa or MasterCard. And so, you know, traditional ways of collecting money wouldn't, wouldn't be appropriate. And so, you know, these are areas where we're moving more into mobile payments and looking at ways that we, we can leverage technology and leverage new ways of paying in order to, to complement the work of, of the group. So if you move to this slide talking about the sustainability hi highlights. What are the three that stand out for you, Jason? There, I guess it's certainly not all about awards, but we're, we're happy to have gotten some recognition that you know we, that speaks to our overall plan. So we learned last week that we were the leading media sector company in the Dow Jones Sustainability World Index, actually for the fifth year running. Within our pillars um, that are shown here, one of the keys to really implementing our plan and ensuring accountability across the business is setting targets for how we're gonna deliver against the plan. So we set a number of those targets in 2016. One of them involves creating new global content principles that will apply to all of our global products across the business to ensure that that content is appropriate, effective, and relevant for all of our learners. We also place a high priority on empowering girls and women and creating opportunities for them across our business from learners to employees to our suppliers. So we set a target last year to publish gender pay details for our UK business by 2018 and for all of our global, global operations by 2020. In pillar two, where we're focusing on, on reaching more learners from all backgrounds, um, we also did a business analysis to understand how important accessibility for people with disabilities is to our overall business performance and our bottom line. Based on that, we set a target to ensure that 100% of our digital product portfolio is fully accessible to people with disabilities um, by 2020. We also developed an incubator. So we know that there's also a lot of people who aren't being served by the current education process for a variety of reasons, or just need more help getting involved, getting access. So we developed an incubator to engage employees to look at how we can address these needs for low-income learners and other disadvantaged groups where our employees submit ideas for new products and then have the opportunity to develop new products. That process has been hugely su successful. We got 167 applications and we're moving forward with four to five of those product opportunities. In pillar three, moving to how we shape the future of learning, there's a number of things to highlight here, but one of them in particular is our partnership with IBM Watson, where we're using advanced technologies to develop personalized, a personalized tutor for all learners who could benefit from the technology to really expand access and opportunities to education. But is there a business case for sustainability? An awful lot of doubters here, Jason. How do you get over this? How do you present it so it's acceptable to business people? I think that's something that we, re we really want to try and bring home here. I think we've been showing through the examples that we've mentioned that the business case and, and making showing the business value is really in the foundation of our sustainability plan. So our plan is really designed to help the business manage risk and improve resilience, to drive innovation and growth, and to build our, rep our brand and reputation. We do this by looking all the way across our value chain. So we look at issues, for example, learner safety and security, the privacy, see, privacy and security of data and information all the way across our business from our learners to how it affects our employees and our suppliers. Uh, we also look at how we can identify new business opportunities and how we can go to market in different ways by identifying unmet needs. And we also recognize the value that sustainability has to our learners and educators who are very socially conscious and care about the impacts that we have in the world. So where sustainability helps us to build and differentiate our brand, open doors, and build the relationships that are key to growing and strengthening our business. 
So I think in terms of the benefits that, that this brings to the company and, and, and to companies in general, I think one of the first things I'd say is that people like working at Pearson, people like working with Pearson. Uh, and I think it's, it really helps us attract talent to have a clear philosophy that we communicate. Uh, and I think what's really important to stress is that these are all of the type of things that I expect the vast majority of people watching this webcast are doing, see their businesses engaging with and this is a framework for formalizing that. Anticipating and managing risks, that's exactly the kind of thing that Treasury departments will do day to day. Thinking about external sh shocks, we've all done our business disruption planning. We've all thought about what happens if a bank goes down or if we can't get into the building. You know, these are business as usual type activities that we're thinking about in a more holistic way. Is that the difference between the normal approach to business and where you're doing it in a holistic way across everything? I, I think to a degree, and I mean, you know, we're not the only ones to do this. If, if you look at, you know, Google's uh, mission statement where they say, don't be evil, you know, that's a very simple way of saying, you know, we're going to try and do good. And, and that's really but they what, failed. Well, uh, <laughs> there's, there's plenty of good that's come from Google. There's, there's, you know, and there's some mixed pieces in there. In, in terms of that sustainability framework, it, it's, it's one of those things that this isn't an idea that's completely foreign. And it's not something that's you know, mutually exclusive with, with delivering a profit. It's not a case of be good or be profitable you know we operate in very competitive market we have a duty to our shareholders to deliver we have a duty to our customers to deliver great products but we also see that by looking to ensure that we we think about the future opportunities we think about the future challenges and we really think about you know the requirements of the customer that is all completely consistent with running a successful and profitable business. Okay, so in Treasury, there is a move now to green bonds and so on. How are you tackling this? What are the opportunities for a company like Pearson? So I think there's, there's a couple of things to say. I think that the first one is that this is a market that's, that's growing incredibly rapidly. What you'll see is that you know, up until 2011, there effectively wasn't a market. And so it, it's really a market that's developed in the last you know, three or four years with any kind of scale. The most obvious areas that it, it's developed have been the, the power market, where you know, many power companies now will, as a matter of course, issue green bonds. I think the key thing to say about a green bond is it has the same broad access that a plain vanilla senior bond has, but has the additional access of, of having the tag of being green. What that tag gives you is access to an investor base who are either targeted with a specific proportion of investment that needs to be sustainable or green, or alternatively, it's, it's funds that are specifically earmarked for those kind of purposes. I think in terms of public relations messages and in terms of investment houses, we're finding that it's something that people really respond to. You know, consumers respond to it as well. And so actually making a public statement to say, this is something we believe in, this is the way that we're acting and, and making sure that you, you communicate that prominently, I think is, is welcomed by people. Is there a difference in the returns you get from different bonds because I, I, there isn't much evidence of there being better returns for green or sustainable bonds yet it's coming but it isn't here yet yeah and I, I think that's right I don't think there's any any material difference between a plain vanilla bond or a green or sustainable bond but I think that's partly a, a reflection of the market that we're operating in. You know, spreads are pretty tight at the moment. This is a market that's operating pretty smoothly, that operates with, with sort of minimal disruption, and there is a, a chase for yield. 
Uh, and so it's unsurprising that investors are already operating pretty close to as tight as they would like to. Where you'd start to see a difference is in a market that gets disrupted because there is, a, there is money that needs to be put to work within the green or sustainable sector. And clearly there's slightly more limited supply in that area. Where does Pearson fit in looking at, look at this type of investment or bonds? So again, I mean, it's something that I hadn't really thought about a great deal until sort of a year or so ago. Uh, and I think that, you know, with the great work that Jason and the team have done, we're in, a, we're in a fantastic situation where we already have most of the materials. It links so incredibly closely with the message that we talk to the markets and, and talk to the street about anyway, that actually it's a natural fit for us to look, you know, the next time we raise finance, to make sure that it is a sustainable bond because you know education is one of the core tenets of, of sustainability and it's it's a message that we really find resonates you're clearly starting to get returns on your sustainability program from the, your reputation behavior of your employees the focused products and services for different markets but how is it going to deliver in the long term I think it comes back to the, the business case, Jack. It's really incumbent upon us, and our plan is really built around demonstrating the value to the business um, in, in the ways that we've seen. So by managing and reducing our risk, by driving innovation, and by enhancing our brand and reputation. And we've shown there are ways to get quick wins out of that, and we need to try and balance the wins and the opportunities we have in the near term with the opportunities we have in the long term and realizing that many of the things that we want to do are also investments. I think it's one of those things that, that sustainability is, is really core to the business and, and particularly from a treasury standpoint. Investors are looking for the long term. Yes, they're interested in, in short term results, but you know, bondholders are often investing for 10 or 12 years and they want to know that you've got an eye on the long term particularly in the market that we're in, but it, it applies in a whole range of markets. Acting sustainably is completely consistent with delivering in the long term. Thanks, guys. That was really useful, really interesting, and I'm sure it'll be of interest to an awful lot of people.